Our text will show that the mission of Christ, of Jesus Christ, was a mission of redemption and revelation. When he came, uh, I think John Sullivan Dwight said it real good. He said, long lay the world in sin and error, pining. In the Christmas song, O Holy Night, when Jesus came, the world was filled with false religions, idols everywhere. And the Jews had transformed Judaism into a superficial religion dominated by man-made rules and regulations. I said this to our workers who work in national positions. I've said this to the adjutants. I've said this to those who serve. Let us serve in the church. Let's make sure that we are getting our protocols and things like that correct. But you have to be careful to keep that stuff in its place. Because you can, you can over protocol. See, you, you can over manage. Then Marilyn, you begin to quench the spirit. And we become a church that's mechanical. And the Holy Spirit can't have his way because that doesn't uh, suit the order of or what they told us in class. Well, sometimes the Lord just throws the order out the window. Amen. And, and the Holy Spirit moves and he, you, you want to be sensitive to the Lord. You thank God for our manual. I love the Church of God in Christ mainly because of our doctrine. The Church of God in Christ's doctrine is a doctrine that is as close to Scripture as any... Uh, denominations doctrine is amen you can't call it scripture now because the bible is the scripture you can't call it scripture it contains our, our doctrine the scriptures it contains the bible it's based on the bible bible biblically based thank god for that but it's not the bible this is the bible no book is the bible but the bible am i right no denominational manual is the Bible. So you can't elevate a manual to the level of Scripture. Nor can you a political party. Nor can you a secret organization. Some churches have masons in the church and they're more loyal to the Masonic Lodge than they are to that church's denominant, that church, uh, the, the Bible, the biblical Christianity. The worshipful master has more power than the pastor. And there's no Bible to support that. Are you with me? The Jews, when Jesus walked the earth, had done the same thing to Judaism that many have done to biblical Christianity today. That lady told us at the airport, I can't go to certain churches. She said, because the, many of the leaders are witches and have sold out and they're allowing things. And instead of dealing with the sin, they look the other way and pretend not to notice. Man of God, pray for me. Jesus came to a dark world. Didn't he do it? He came to a world that was filled 
with sin. And the religious leaders, the, the Pharisees, had lost their anointing if they ever had it. Are you with me? The Bible says this, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him that the world might be saved. You know, there are people who will quickly say, well, Jesus didn't come to condemn. That's true. But he didn't come to leave the world like he found it either. See, if he was going to come to leave it like he found it, Sister William, there's no point in coming. He came to save. Amen. So the world was in sin. Judaism had lost its power. And there had been a 400 year silence from the last prophet who had spoken was the prophet Malachi. And uh, there was this silence. And yet, in the midst of this silence and in the midst of the idols and uh, the superficial religion, there were still some people who loved the law. And was waiting for the move of God. And, and one day, are you praying for me? Something amazing took place. During our Lord's earthly sojourn, every descendant of Aaron was, and who was male was automatically a priest. See, the priesthood was by pedigree. And, um, and, and that tells you that for all practical purposes, there were too many priests. <laughs> um, um, uh, for all ordinary purposes, there were priests everywhere. No power, but priests. There were at least 22,000 priests altogether. And the only time that all of the priests served was at the Passover and Pentecost and the Feast of Weeks. So to get a chance to serve as a priest in the service of the Lord was considered the highlight of their lives. It was quite possible that in all of their lives, many priests would never have the privilege of burning incense. I guess you would liken that almost to have an opportunity to preach nationally. I, I'm humbled and I praise the Lord for the opportunities that the Lord has granted me and those who are in positions of authority has granted to your servant to speak to our church on a national level. Some serve their entire lives and never get to preach in St. Louis or Memphis or in any of the national conventions but if the lot fell on any priest to get a chance to burn incense that day was considered to be the greatest day of his life it was the day of which he dreamt it was his Super Bowl moment one day the lot fell on a priest who up until this point, his entire life had been considered a tragedy. This is why every person should stay with God. Maybe right now, where you are right now, uh, things haven't gone the way that you would like. Bro, pull it. Maybe it hadn't kind of worked out as planned. Are you following me? Stay with the Lord. Because see, God comes on the early train and he comes on the late train. So you don't know when. Your job is to just be in place. Amen. That was a priest whose life was a tragedy. He was talked about amongst his fellow brethren and comrades. As a matter of fact, 
the Jews, the rabbis had a saying that there were seven people in life who were excommunicated from God. And the list begins with, number one, a Jew who had no wife. If you was a Jewish male and wasn't married and a priest, you were considered excommunicated. He's cursed. He can't even get a wife. Look at him. And the second was a Jew who has a wife, but he had no child. He's married, but he has produced no seed. Among the rabbis, I didn't say it was Bible. Among the rabbis, they said, this is a sign that this man has been deserted by God, excommunicated by God. As a matter of fact, it was viewed with such ill disrepute that childlessness was a valid ground for divorce. And yet this priest, even though he had been ridiculed, talked about, made fun of, his wife treated as an outcast, he loved his wife. And stayed married to her. And stayed with the Lord. He didn't leave the priesthood. Amen. I don't know. It might be just me. It's a little warm in here. Is it you? Is it me? Y'all doing all right? Because you don't normally get me to say. <laughs> Amen. You know, we, we struggle when, the, when, the, when it's like this, you know. We're in January, it's 70 degrees. So, so people, better, people need to live right. That's what's wrong. Well, it's, it's, it's global warming, man made not, it's sin made. The Bible teaches that the entire universe groaneth and mourneth for the manifestation of the sons of God. You can read in the Old Testament where the land mourned and rebelled when sin was taking place on it. And here we are with a man married to a man running for the office of the presidency. We've endorsed lifestyle that God says are wrong. And we wonder why. Wonder why the weather's confused. We're wicked. Now, let me get back to this. Let me get back to this. So this, this man who, who, who was a good man, and, and brothers, did I mention that he stayed with his wife? I, I thought I'd get an amen on that. that. That he did not forsake her. And even though he had the stigma, the greater weight of the stigma was on her. They were childless. And one day, God allowed the lot to fall on this priest who was a good man, a godly man, faithful to God. Told the Lord, even though uh, you have not allowed my wife and I to conceive, I'll still be faithful to you. I'll still be a priest. I'll still serve. Even though we are childless, I'm not leaving this woman. And I see all those other women batting their eyes at me, saying, we could give you a whole bunch of children. And it may be true, but I'm not leaving this woman. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna tough it out. And time had passed, and she was past the flower of her age. So they just assumed that for the rest of their lives, they would have to live under this stigma, uh, but that they would live under it and that they would be together and that they would stay faithful to God. That day, the lot fell on him. I wonder would you, have you made up in your mind? Have you made up your mind to serve God regardless of what? Or do you have an ultimatum up before the Lord? Now, Lord, if you don't move and fix this in a certain amount of time, I'm just going to backslide like the sun going to stop shining. 
Like that will make any difference at all. You leave the Lord, you go down. Amen. You, you get mad when you can't have your way and you quit coming to church. You, the church not going to stop. Never. You always think more highly of yourself than you ought to think when you think that your presence matter that much. If I die today, the truth marches on. On and on and on. Can I get a witness? That day, I feel something. The light fell on this priest. Said, guess what? It's your turn to serve and to light incense in the temple. You Bible students have guessed it by now that I'm talking about the man who became the father of John the Baptist, the mighty priest Zachariah, who was married to the woman who became the mother of John the Baptist, the wonderful and beautiful Elizabeth, who was the cousin of Mary. Who, was, who became the mother of Jesus Christ. Mary got uh, pregnant six months after Elizabeth. Mary was a virgin. Elizabeth was not. Amen. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary as she, when she conceived. The Holy Spirit came upon Zachariah. And his, something came, huh? and when he got through, she was with child. Old man like that. <laughs> Zachariah said, I pulled it off. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke's gospel, chapter one, that was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zachariah. Of the course of Abiah. And his wife was the daughter, was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were direct descendants of Aaron. All direct descendants of Aaron were automatically priests. And so, and then the wife of a priest, uh, she had to be an absolute pure. Woman of Jewish lineage. So there we have, here we have Zacharias and Elizabeth. And they were both, look at this, righteous before God. Walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord blameless. So even though they had made the Jews on, uh, as a race, had made a mockery of Judaism and made it superficial, there were still some people serving the Lord. And then Luke tells us what I've just shared with you, and they had no child. Because it wasn't that Zacharias had a problem, Elizabeth did. The Bible tells us that Elizabeth was barren. Not only was she barren, and the Bible says, and both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass. While he executed the priest's office, uh-huh, before God. He was happy that day. It was his day, uh, Elder Miller, in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. I mean, what an honor. And while in there, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. They were praying while they gathered to pray in the temple. He was in the inner court of the temple. Praise the Lord. He was in the court of the priests. Sacrifices were being made in the court of the Israelites, and that's why they were praying. But he was in the court of the priests. 
And the people were out praying. And while he was in there on the biggest day of his life, with a life up until now that had been considered a tragedy, look at God. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled. And fear fell, on, fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers is heard. He'd been praying all these years. Praying for his wife. How many husbands are praying for their wife? Praying for his wife. He says, and thy wife, Elizabeth, he stayed with her. He hung in there, shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, which means Yahweh is gracious. You've been praying for your wife. I thought I'd get a big amen. amen. You stayed with her through the thick and thin. She couldn't produce like you wanted her to. You wanted children. She could give you no children. But you were an honorable man. Amen. And you stayed there. And because you did, God is going to remember you. I talked to a lady yesterday, a white lady, while we were waiting to fly. She was talking to me about her husband who had recently passed. Clarence was with me. She said, my husband was the love of my life. And she says, he's been passed down for several years. A beautiful lady. And she says, I have no desire even to remarry. She said, I feel like I would be doing him wrong. She said, but when I lost him, uh, she loved the Lord. She said, I got bitter. And I went through and the preacher told me, my pastor said, God loves you. And the Lord is here for you. And the Lord is going to bless you to get over this and to survive it. And, and the lady, you would think she'd never had a tragedy in her life because she was so full of life and so full of joy. Zacharias loved Elizabeth. Look at God got me hanging around on this point. I ain't even pre I'm, I'm preaching about revelation and manifestation, and I'm hung up right there. See, the Holy Ghost will hang you up. Amen. Now, brethren, they're putting their shawls on because they're getting cold. I don't know about this church. I don't understand. <laughs> Amen. And so, yes, he, he, he loved her. And he says, you've been praying for her. And says, not only is she going to get pregnant, but she's going to give you a son. And thou shalt call his name John. And, and, and thou shalt have joy and gladness. I'm going to take away your scorn. I'm going to change your life. You will go from being considered a life, yours will go from being considered a life of tragedy to a champ. You are going to be a winner. And many shall rejoice at his birth. And look at this. He won't be a loser. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And he shall, look at this, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and shall uh, be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his birth and many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. What happened that day? What happened? Technically, this was the day when the 400 years of silence was broken. See, uh, long before, 30 years before John the Baptist preached repentance, Gabriel showed up and gave this word from the law to Zechariah. And uh, look at this. 30 years later, are you with me? 30 years later, approximately, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 3. Turn quickly, turn quickly. Oh, I don't want to be before you too long, but I want you to get this. 
In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, this is 30 years after uh, Gabriel talked to Zacharias. In those days came John, the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness. Look at this. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The silence is broken. The move of God, the, 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 the move of God of revelation and redemption had resumed. You know, Moses said in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 18 and verse 15, he says, The Lord thy God shall raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me, him shall ye hearken. Verse 18 says, I will raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I command him. They've been waiting for this prophet. Zechariah said the forerunner of the prophet is going to be your son. The Holy Ghost then visited Mary and told her six months later, Hail Mary, thou art blessed among women. You've been chosen to bear the Christ child. And then the, uh, 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 Gabriel uh, told Mary Elizabeth's business. He said, and, and by the way, Elizabeth is pregnant too. She's been pregnant for six months. Uh, with, with John, and then when Elizabeth visited Mary, the baby John in her womb leaped and was filled with the Holy Ghost while she was in the presence of Mary who was, uh, had, con had had Jesus conceived, planted on the inside of her by the Holy Spirit. Mary and Joseph didn't have sex. Elizabeth and uh, 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 Zachariah did. And so now you, we see God breaking his silence. Three, 30 years later, oh my, Jesus, John comes and he's preaching the message of redemption. In John's gospel chapter one and verse 19, you see what John preached. And they asked John, who are you, man? Tell us who you are. And John begins to unfold God's truth. Do you all love the Bible? I enjoy preaching Bible to you. I thank God that I pastor a church where the saints love the Bible. John chapter 1 verse 19. Here's what they said. And this is the record of John. When the Jews and the priests and the Levites from Jerusalem uh, uh, look at this, asked of him. They asked him, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elijah? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? That prophet that Moses spoke of, Deuteronomy 18? And verse 15 and verse 18, are you not that prophet? He answered, no, I am not. And they said unto him, who art thou? Uh, uh, that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. He says, I am the forerunner. See, when a king came to a city, the king always had a forerunner, an entourage to uh, precede him. Their job was to make sure the streets were safe. The streets was clean. Clean up the streets. Make sure everything is right because the king is going to come this way. We were in D.C. not too long ago. And uh, the, the, the streets were blocked off. And I heard uh, uh, sirens and saw motorcycles and saw a big 
motorcade. This was about three or four years ago. And somebody who was from the area said, uh, this was way, much later than that, said, said, that's President Clinton. That's the president going by. Because see, when whatever route the president went, there needs to be a forerunner to make sure everything is in order. So, praise the Lord, John says, I am the one that Isaiah prophesied about. And, uh, and it says, and they which were sent were the Pharisees. And they asked him, and he said unto them, uh, why baptize thou then if thou art not that Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is whose coming is after me, uh, is preferred before me, and whose shoe latches, I, latches, I am not worthy to unloose. Good God Almighty. And you remember Matthew says that John says he, he, he's coming after me and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The next day, verse 29, John see of Jesus coming and said unto them, Behold, the Lamb of God, which comes to take away the sins of the world. What's going on? God is breaking his silence. He's breaking his silence. The story of redemption and revelation is on the way. Now let's go approximately three years into the future. Three years after John was interrogated, interrogated. By now, John the Baptist is dead. By now, Jesus had healed. And the mission of redemption and revelation is actually, by now, is complete. It's on automatic pilot. By now, Jesus had served uh, the communion. He had washed the disciples' feet. And now it's time for him to pray. And he prays to the Father in chapter 17. And then we, he gets to the text in verse, seven, in verse 6. He says, I have manifested. I have made plain thy name. Are you praying for me? The word name in scripture is not just a person's title. But name is a person's attributes. Name is is a person's character. Name uh, declares the, the, the nature of the individual. Jesus says, I have made clear the Father's name. I have declared the Father's nature. The concept of God's name impasses, encompasses, excuse me, all that he is. Bible says in Psalms 9 and verse 10, and they that know thy name shall put their, their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. When you know God's name, when you know his name, you know that the Father is trustworthy. When you know his name, you know his true nature. You know that he's holy. He's righteous. And when you really know his name, you can tell folk who really know the father's name because when trouble break out, they call on that name. Because I mean, that's what they know about him. They know that if everybody else forsake me, the Lord will not forsake me. How do you know this? Because I know his name. There are certain things I know about the Lord that can't nobody tell me. Praise the Lord. People say the Lord's not moving anymore like he used to. You don't know his name. God is moving by his spirit. He's moving throughout the world. You just got to know his name. The Bible says in Psalms 22 and 22, I will declare thy name unto thy brethren. And in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. And you know Psalms uh, 20 and verse 7 says, and this is the quote, scripture I quote every time I pray. 
Now, every time I fly, looking at the plane, as I board the plane, I touch the plane and say, some trust in chariots and others in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. See, thank you for the pilot. Thank you for the technology. Thank you for all that goes into building these things. But I don't put my trust in those things. I put my trust in the Lord. How many people here today trust the Lord? Amen. Let me tell you, don't let the news shake you up. Don't let the headlines bother you. God is still in control. Don't let the things that's happening in your life trouble you too much. Just trust his name. I tell you, I tell you, I was praying about something uh, today, and I, I just lifted it up before the Lord. You know what God told me? He spoke to me in ways that I knew it was him. He says, oh, just stick with the truth. That's all you do. You stick with my truth. You stick with scripture, and I will take care of everything else. He said, don't worry about gossip. Don't worry about what this one's doing, that one's doing. Don't get into that. See, some of us get wrapped up in gossip and dirt and trash. That's not what God called us to promote. We need to promote God's truth. Tell the world that he's a way maker. Tell the world that he's a healer. The world already know that there's a lot of trash. The world already know that there's a lot of mess. People are looking for deliverance. I want to tell the world that Jesus is still the only deliverer that there, there, that there is. You just got to know him. Can I hear from a few people who know his name? Jesus said, I have I feel something manifested thy name. I made it plain. See, in case they've been wondering, Father, in case they've been wondering what you're like, in case they've wondered who you are, I came to reveal you to man. Good God Almighty, I came to make you known. And by the time of our text, Jesus had fully accomplished the Father's plan. That is his mission to reveal to men who Jesus is, who God the Father is. He says, have you been so long with me, Philip? And now you ask me, show us the Father? He let Philip know that, man, man if you want to know who the Father is, just look at me. If you want to know what God is like? Just look at me. Not these other false gods, but me. Jesus is uh, Amen. The way, the truth, and the life. Can I get a witness? Philip said to Jesus in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 8, and Philip said unto him, show us the Father, and that will satisfy us, and it sufficeth us. And Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. When I healed the sick, that was the Father. When I raised the dead, that was the Father. When I fed 5,000, that was the Father. When I walked on water, that too was the Father. And just hang around, and they're going to take me to the cross. And uh, I'm going to be raised from the dead. That too will be the work of the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that he that believeth on me, 
good God Almighty, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Good God Almighty, and if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you want to see what God looks like, if you want to know what God sounds like, hallelujah, y'all bring me up as I get ready to take this home. If you want to know about the Father, you ain't got to turn to the Quran. It can never tell you. You don't have to turn to a strange philosophy. It doesn't know. If you want to see God the Father, the Father is wrapped up in the Son. Jesus said something that was considered to be shocking. If anyone else said it, they would have been lying. What did Jesus say in John's Gospel, chapter 12 and verse 45? Well, we'll start with verse 44. And Jesus cried, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that have seen me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. He said, if you believe on me, you won't be unhappy. You won't go into ruin. You won't be lost. I come to give you a way out. And if any man hear my words and believe me not, I judge him not. He says, when the sinner chooses not to believe me, then the sinner has passed judgment on himself. He said, I don't have to judge him, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. You see, the world was already lost. The world was already on its way to hell. The world needed a savior. Jesus didn't come to tell them how bad they were because they were already messed up. But he came to set us free. Some of you out there, you argue and say that Jesus didn't come to judge. No, he didn't come to condemn the world because the world was already condemned. But he came to set the world free. I'm so glad that the Lord came to set me free. The lifeguard don't just swim out there just to get exercise, but he swims out there to save the drowning man. I was drowning deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But I had the captain of the sea. He had my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Now safe am I. Lord, Lord, lifted me. God's love lifted me with nothing. I said nothing. I said nothing. Football wouldn't help. Women wouldn't help. Beer couldn't help. The club couldn't help. My mama couldn't help. The Lord, oh, his love lifted me. Yeah. I believe I have a witness in here. Somebody can say I was down, but the Lord saved me. I was lost, but he brought me out. Let me hear you praise him if I'm telling your story. for me if you've been lost and the Lord found you just leap
jump up and down one or two times and give him glory for finding you and setting you free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's setting me free. Jesus said, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, he hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. I want to tell the world, you may laugh at the preacher, you may call us crazy, you may call us holy rollers, you may call us judgmental, but the same gospel that we've been preaching down through the years, when you stand before the Lord on that great day, he's going to judge you. He's going to say, you heard Wooden, you heard Amachuku, you heard Wilson, you heard, you heard, you heard Bowden, you heard, you heard preachers, you heard Bishop Patterson, you heard Elder Turner, you heard Bishop Mason, you heard, you heard preachers crying loud and sparing not, you heard the presiding bishop, you heard, oh Lord, you heard missionaries, you heard prophets, you heard my word, but you wouldn't listen. Now I'm going to judge you by that same word because the word it revealed to you who I am. The word made it clear that I am the way, the truth, and the life. The word revealed that I love you. The word revealed that I came to bring salvation. I came to get you out of your sins. But you decided rather than to get saved, you married a man. The Lord spared you. You could have got right. But instead of getting right, you doubled down on your sin. The same word that you ignored. You're going to have to stand before that word. But I'm glad that when I heard the word, how many can say I'm glad? Woo! That when I heard it, what did you do when you heard it? to say I got right I got right I got right you know one of the great uh, evangelists of the state of North Carolina he's called the prayer the, the prophet of greater North Carolina the mighty man of God superintendent Tom Ann Legrand he used to have he still does conduct tent meetings and in every tent meeting and in every service, they would sing the song, get it right with God and do it now. Get it right with God. He'll show you how. Right down at the cross where Jesus shed his blood. Get it right with God. Get it right with God. I know today, today that there are people in here who got it right with God. You got saved when it was revealed that Jesus came to redeem you from your sins, to buy you back from the devil's clutches. When it was revealed to you that Jesus is the savior of the world. You know what you did? You came out of that mess. You came out of that sin. You came out of that club and you got right with God in my clothes. I believe I have some people here who are glad that they got right with God. Are you glad that you got right? Good God Almighty, songwriter said, I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary, wounded, sad, 
but I found in him a resting place. He made me glad. He made me glad. Do I have any glad folk? I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that I'm sanctified. I'm glad that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. He put running in my feet. He put clapping in my hand. He put joy in my heart. He put love in my life. He heals me when I get sick. He raised me up when I'm sinking low. He is my best friend. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's so good. He's so kind. I love him. I love him. I love him. Do I have anybody here who loves the Lord? I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied my every groan as long as I live. And trouble rise. How hasten. How hasten. I'm going to hasten to his throne. Praise him if you love him. Give him praise. Uh, Let them see you on television. Tell them I know who Jesus is. I know. I know who the Lord is. Yeah. Who is it? He's my joy. He's my hope. He's my I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. Do you love him today? Let me hear you praise the Lord. Woo! Do you love him, John? I love him. I love the Lord. Because he first loved me. Do you love him today? Do you love him today? Woo! Uh, Shabbat the Lord all over the church. Lift your voice. Lift your hands. And uh, I haven't asked you to tell your neighbor anything. But I wonder, oh Lord, don't say it if it's not true. But if you see and if you understand, I'm not talking about those who are confused now, but if you understand who Jesus is, if you see like I see what God is doing, if you understand that he's the only savior and that he's coming back and that he's still in charge and that he loves us and that he's still a healer and still a way maker and still have power, power. Somebody by the hand and say, I see. And 
I understand. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. You have something up before the Lord. You're waiting for Jesus to fix it. You're Zachariah. Oh, Lord. Waiting for your visitation. But you're as committed as you can be. You just believe God's going to do it anyhow. And you're not going to get bitter. But you're going to serve him in the midst of it. Hallelujah. You're willing to wait as long as it takes. But you're under attack. The Lord said, today's your day. Meet me at the altar. Uh, do I have anybody here who says, Lord, I'm, I'm going to serve you, Jesus, forevermore, 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 mm, forevermore, forevermore. I've got it ready. I'm going to serve him. I'm not giving up. Your, your man, uh, people, I'm not giving up. But I'm going to serve you, Jesus, forevermore. I'm going to serve you forevermore. Let me say, you've been so good to me, Lord. Forevermore, I'm going to serve you forever. I'm going to serve King Jesus forevermore. I've got to serve him. serve the Savior forevermore. I've got to serve him forevermore. One thing, you've been so good to me, Lord, forevermore. I've got to serve you. Let me say, you set my spirit free, Lord, I've got to serve you.
praise him on the altar. 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 Praise him if you love him. Praise him if you love him. Praise him if you love him. Praise him if you're committed. Praise him if you're committed. Hey, come on, shout. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory. Be to God. Glory. Glory. Go on and make your commitment to him. You who are streaming, you can't be here, but make your commitment to him. You ought to tell Jesus, I'm going all the way. You ought to tell Jesus, I see who you are. I understand. I'm going to hold to your hand. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to stay with God. I'm going to stay with God's truth. In the name of Jesus. Father, there are some people on this altar. Life is heavy on it. The devil is trying to destroy them. But God, you are. You are healer. You intervene. You make ways. You fix things, Lord. You deliver. You set free. Do it right now, Lord. Do it right now, Lord. Do it right now, Lord. Lord, strengthen. Lord, encourage. In the name of Jesus, heal on this altar and fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we commit to you. 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 We just commit to you. The Lord said, just preach the truth. The Lord said, just stick with the truth. I got everything else. All you got to do, just stay with the Bible. 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 Oh, praise him right now. Praise him right now. You may not even be able to see it. You may not even understand. But just praise the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. We're almost done. We're going to leave it today. But somebody is getting a breakthrough. I haven't touched anybody, but I prayed for everybody. God, right now, touch every soul. Touch every soul. Touch every soul on the altar. Yeah! Heal where it is needed. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Man, be made whole, be made whole, be made whole. Hallelujah. We're not worried about Thursday. We're not worried about Tuesday. God's got gotcha. you. Hey. Yeah. Oh, oh. The Lord revive you. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. Sometimes life will take a turn and have you saying to yourself, Lord, I, I didn't sign up for all this. I didn't know. I didn't know. Lord, I, I don't know if I can handle this. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Not just this, but what, what you're facing, the things, things, fair and unfair, you're built for it. You're going to make it. Look at the Holy Ghost. Look at the Holy Ghost. You are not going to fall apart. You're going to, oh, you're going you're gonna to emerge stronger than you've ever been and more committed to Jesus Christ. Somebody hold my microphone. Hallelujah. And you know, I'm going to anoint you. And what I'm going to anoint you with today, what I'm going to anoint you with today, I'm going to anoint you with the oil of gladness. Give a joy. Give a joy. Give a joy. Give a 
I want everybody in here to praise God for this woman of God. There is, there may be more. I'm going to count her. No, the Spirit said don't count her. There is, not counting her, at least 10 people in here on this altar who have within the last 30 days, no, last week, the words that come out of your mouth, God or Jesus a while or some kind of way, this is too much. If you have uttered those words, either audibly or in your mind, because of the manifold temptation, make your way to me. I want to touch you. Because the Lord says, it's not too much. There have no temptation. I'm going to count ten. There have, but, but the Lord said there may be more. Duh, it's not too much. It, two, it's not too much. Woo. Three, it's not too much. Four, it's not. It's not too much. There you go. Five, it's not. It's not too much. Six, it's not too much. Oh my God. Seven, it's not. It's not too much. Eight, it's not too much. Nine, it's not. It's not. It's ten, it's not too much. Eleven, it's not. It's not. My God, there's a move for everybody. It's not too much. It's not too much. Woo! You can't take it away. My God, it's not too much. It's not. Ah! It's not. It's not. Uh, hey, 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 hey. My God, the Lord's reviving right now. Woo! It's not too much. It's not. It's not. Woo! You have victory. My God, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. It's not too much. It's not too much. It is not. It is not. No, it is not. No, it is not. No, 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 no. No, no it is not. Woo, it's not. It's not too much. Woo! Somebody praise him. Somebody magnify him. Somebody glorify him. Praise the Lord for these. It's not too much. You can take it. You can make it. It's getting better all the time. There's a brighter day coming. There's a brighter day coming. The Lord give you what you want from it. Woo! The Lord touch you right now. Hey, 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 hey. The Lord touch you. The Lord knows. The Lord knows. The Lord, the Lord. The Lord, the Lord. Woo! Hey, hey, the Lord. My God today. My friend right there. My, 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 my. The Lord knows. Woo! God knows how to uncomplicate things. Woo! Everybody praise him. 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 Everybody. Ah! Uh, oh! Uh-huh. Your day. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Good God Almighty. Yes, Lord. Woo! Your New Year's blessing. You were sick, but God remembered. Hey, hey! Oh, that's Woo! That's going. That's right, sister. My God, you love the Lord. You love the Lord, and the Lord told me that He loves you. Woo! Jesus. Let there go a roar of praises all the way up. All the way up. Everywhere. 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 Where's Lester? Woo! Everywhere. It's not too much. God's not through. God's not through. Woo! In the name of Jesus. Woo! Not too much. You are 
already know it. It's not too much. It's not too much. It's not too much. Ooh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That's my right, sister. Get your blessing. Hallelujah. It's not too much. In the name of Jesus. Manifold challenges, but it's not too much. In Jesus' name. Glory. I am with you. I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Woo! There you go, sister. God, it's not too much. The glory of God be on you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Somebody give the Lord a life-changing praise. Praise Him like something just happened. you he sees where you are he see your situation he hear the frustration he hears the frustration the glory will make it worth <laughs> make it worth the trouble make it worth the time the glory the glory He came to redeem us. He came to set us free. You can go to your seats praising the Lord. I have prayed the prayer. I have said what the Lord told me to say. I have anointed and touched all whom the Lord led me to touch. I have said what the Lord have told me to tell you. Let him, let him praise him. Dad, Dad, take your hands off him. Just let him praise him. That's right. See, because God's doing something. Dad, I know you're not, that's your son, but I know. But sometimes you have to, sometimes the Lord will take you somewhere where can't nobody go. Oh, Lord. Sometimes he'll take you into his inner sanction. 
You won't even need no music Oh, Lord Somebody give God A round of praise gonna let you down he's not gonna let you down right here where the Holy Spirit is moving and the fire is hot and God is healing and delivering see he has major surgery coming up Tuesday we believe in God they found a tumor on his brain. This is a young man. God's got him. God's got him. Loved ones, just make sure you don't let God down. Sometimes when things happen to you, you start asking God questions. And it's human to ask questions. But the Lord knows. God knows what he's doing. 